13 mistakes not to make when you venture into coaching, consulting, or telemedicine. I've made many of these early on in my career, and it created so much more stress than what needed to be. A lot of headaches, and I lost money by not doing certain things. So I'm going to share with you some advice that I've learned over the years. Please take notes and don't make the mistakes that I made. Not setting boundaries was a big one. When you enroll someone into your coaching program, you need to be very clear, for instance, on how communication will go. In my coaching program, for instance, my clients know that we will be on the phone once per week. The calls will be recorded. The calls last usually 30 to 40 minutes on average. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, definitely feel free to shoot me an email. I don't limit them to two emails a week. And I say, whatever, you know, if you need any time, send me an email. But I at least set a boundary, and you should do that in all the different areas so it's very clear from the get-go, right? You're setting and you're managing expectations from the start. Big, big deal. Now, something else, for instance, if you are sending emails and a client emails you, if you consistently respond within 5 to 10 minutes, guess what? they're going to expect that. So as your client load gets really large and you can't meet that demand, maybe you have to wait a day or two days before you respond to this client. Well, you've already set an expectation that you're responding so rapid and now you risk that relationship going uh, amiss because of certain things. So just be very clear about the tone of the relationship and the expectations and make sure it's all up front when you get going. In fact, what I would recommend is when somebody enrolls in your program, list, have them list their top four expectations. I mean, if it's telemedicine, regardless, um, you know, what are their top four health expectations? What do they want and expect from this relationship? The same thing if it's another consulting relationship. Literally have them list those things out so you know in their mind what are the top priorities and you can address those each and every single session to make sure you're on the right page. The next mistake is pricing yourself too low. We talked about this earlier, but people assume that the best products and services will be expensive. And the more expensive you are, the more somebody will value the service. It's incredible how that works. And I gave you the example before, if you were just to compare, let's say, a Walmart bag versus a Chanel bag. Is that Chanel bag 100 times better, the quality of leather? No, it's not. Is it better? Yes, it is. But there's a lot of that brand perception and the marketing that's went into that. But you don't want to be on the low end of the spectrum or else people won't value your service as much. And you're not going to have a big margin to spend a fortune and value back in on the client. The goal, you know, one of those is to charge a premium so you can then deliver an immense value back on the client. And you just can't do that if you're charging pennies on the dollar for your services. So definitely lean toward the high end in your industry. Another mistake is allowing clients to pay per session. Now, if you have a, let's say, chiropractic practice and you're watching this right now, you know typically when people pay per session, guess what? They don't usually follow the treatment plan that you laid out. I don't care if they have a herniated disc and they come in your office. If you don't collect a payment up front, then, well, you're probably not going to have that person adhere to the program as best they can. Even if it's a half installment or some monthly installment that they have to pay, it's just well known. So ideally, what I like to do in a coaching relationship is, very minimally do I charge per hour. Now, I know in the telemedicine spectrum, you will charge per hour, but you might be able to offer bundles of packages of three, six, nine visits, whatever that is. And if somebody prepays up front, you know, yeah, they're going to be more committed to the process because they don't want to let that money go to waste. And they're going to follow your recommendations. So somebody might not like when they coach with me for me to tell them to do something in that first week, but they've already paid me you know, $7,000 or $15,000 or whatever type of coaching that they're enrolled in. So they're probably going to do what I say so they don't let that investment go to waste. And what happens is these clients, because they have skin in the game, 
They end up getting the best results, and bam, that snowball turns into an avalanche so fast. The same thing can happen with you when you coach or consult your clients if they are on board. So it's important to at least collect a very large payment up front if that's possible. Poor tax planning is another big mistake. Listen, when you start making pretty good money uh, as an independent contractor, and that's really what you are, your contractor, if you have your own separate business or if you're, if you're in business for yourself, um, you know, you've got your LLC or subchapter S corporation, or even if you're sole proprietor, it's not like being an employee. If you're watching this right now, if you are an associate or an employee, you need to make sure if you're collecting big paychecks, you're setting aside, I'd set aside at least 25% to start with for taxes out of everything that comes in. And you can pay that to the IRS quarterly on a website, for instance, like officialpayments.com, I believe it is. You know, so that's important for you to do. You don't want to get hit with this big tax bill at the end of the year and thought all this money was free. That was a rude awakening that I had to go through. And trust me, you, you need to pay your stuff on time just to make sure. Plan on 25% as you grow in the higher tax brackets. Well, you know, uh, definitely plan accordingly. And you can go to the IRS's website and figure out which tax bracket you may be in. Next mistake is not holding clients accountable. Every week, there should be action steps after you get off the phone with this person, whether it's for your telemedicine business or consulting. So for this week, by the time we get on the phone next, you have to have this done, this done, and this done. If it's not done, then we're not going to get on the phone. So there has to be some type of penalty. And if a client is consistently coming on the phone and say, well, you know, I didn't do this and that, and you have to have a really strong, uh, very heart-to-heart -heart talk with them and see if they are still in it. I've had clients, and it's, it's not often, but I've had clients pay me a lot of money and a couple weeks go by and they're not getting the desired, they're not getting the assignments done that like I'm telling them to do. And then I will be very direct with that person and, and let them know, is, is it me? Is it this relationship? You know, what's going on with, I mean, is, is it something on your end that I need to know? Because this is what I expect from you. You invested this much. This is the result that you want. And in order to get from point A to point B, these steps have to get completed we can drag these steps out for six months or a year, but typically with other clients, we don't do that. We get stuff done every single week or every other week, whatever the expectation is. Is this still good for you? No, don't be afraid of confrontation. The next mistake is no contract or NDA in place, non-disclosure agreement. We talked about this before. You don't want to get burned and have somebody rip off your stuff or reproduce, share it, and you know who knows potentially uh, become a competitor in the space so you have to have these things in place right up front not gifting there's a great book by John Rulin called giftology I actually gave it away to social media revenue summits uh, members last year at our live event and uh, this is a great book because it teaches you the art of gifting and premium positioning in the marketplace and it's not what you think. You know, most people give gifts with like corporate logos or stuff that you're probably not going to wear out anyway. It's not really personal and heartfelt. But when you're able to charge a lot of money for your services, you can spend money back on the client and get them nice gifts periodically. And this is totally random, by the way. There, there is a strategy to it in terms of, you know, the, the classic stuff like on birthdays or holidays. I like to avoid those because that's so predictable and you're going to get lost with everyone else. And if they ever get a gift from a corporation or another consultant, it's probably going to have their logo on it. It might be some, I don't know, cheap phone charger or whatever it is. It's really not uh, well thought out. So you want to be very out of the box with your gifting, but I would recommend having it in place. This is almost like having a marketing budget set aside. But my strongest recommendation for you would actually to read two books. One is Giftology by John Rulin, R-U-H-L-I-N. Uh, and the other one is Never Lose a Customer Again by Joey Coleman. I think you'll find tremendous value out of those books. Not asking for a testimonial. This is a huge mistake. If you've gotten amazing results for a client, 
you need to hit them up at their peak when they're when they're loving you right now that's when you just need to say hey you know mr jones i'm thrilled you've gotten these great results during our relationship and you've applied what i've taught you and it's worked out extremely well listen i, I would love your feedback and testimonial number one because it helps me help more people like you that we're in a similar situation and uh just number two it's just amazing to feature success stories and to inspire others uh, i mean would you mind giving me your testimonial this could be on video you could post it on my facebook fan page or you can just send me an email you know what do you, what do you think about that and let them answer i can guarantee you nine times out of ten they will do it for you so make sure you're getting this feedback you can never have too many testimonials uh, for sure right we talked about earlier uh, in a different video, the number one reason why people don't buy from you in general is because they don't believe you. So the more social proof you have, the more testimonials, then the more likely you are to have somebody do business with you, especially if they're going to spend thousands and thousands of dollars for consulting, which you know everyone knows consulting is more of a premium offer anyway. So stack and stack up the testimonials. Not offering other services. If you have a client that's consulted with you, already spent thousands of dollars, they want more information from you. If they're getting results in particular, it would be very easy for you to have other services that you might offer. For instance, I'll give you an example of my business. And, uh, you know, with my goodness, my social media revenue summit last year, we had, uh, and this is a high ticket event, had about 85 people in attendance. And I would say at least 25 to 30 in the room were private coaching clients. And the reason why this is, is number one, and you can do a couple of different ways. Number one, if you wanted to, you could bundle a product or service into the coaching program that you have just to add extra value if you wanted to. Um, you know, for, for one of my coaching programs, we actually include a ticket to our social media revenue summit in Atlanta every August. So that's included within our, one of our programs. But the other coaching program, it's not. So with those clients, it makes sense for me because they've already received amazing results. And I say, hey, listen, I'm hosting this event in Atlanta that you would be a great fit for. Plus, I'm going to have at least 20 other private coaching clients in the room that are doing seven figures every year. And you know, you know the magic happens when you network and you're around other A players that are doing big things in business. Plus, I'm going to cover these, you know, these things at this event. Um, I'm, you know, like I think this would be a great fit for you. I'll send you the link and you know, let me know what you think. So I put it out there to these particular clients, and many times they're like, "Yeah, absolutely, I'm in." Because I've gotten them great results, and yes, they want to interact with other A players, and they're they're totally cool with having a wonderful luxury experience in Atlanta or in the Caribbean or wherever that is um, with great content. So always be thinking of other value you can add to them. And this could be offering another service that you have. Make sure you mention if somebody is going to buy from you once, it's a lot easier to sell them on another service because they've already received results. You know, it's, it's sometimes it can be very difficult to acquire a new client. So don't forget to take care of your existing people in many different ways, whether that's gifting them, communicating with them via email on a regular basis weekly, and then offering them other services that would help them get closer to the result they want to generate. Not over-delivering. This is a big mistake too, right? This is, this kind of goes into, I guess you could say the, um, well, you could one, one element could go into the gifting aspect. The other thing is I like to surprise my clients periodically so that, you know they knew they were purchasing one thing and this is what they're getting, this, this, and this, and this. But periodically I'll say, hey, I created this over here that I'm just going to give it to you complimentary since you are a private coaching member. That's called over-delivering, right? They expected one thing and now I'm just giving them more, something else to get them closer to the result they want to generate or I might introduce them to a new connection that they weren't expecting that can be mutually beneficial for both of them so always try to over deliver with your most valuable clients another mistake is not repackaging expertise into other products and programs you're consulting right now but 
you could easily take a lot of this information and put it into an online course. And I'll show you how to do that in our specific module. You can take your knowledge, your insights, your expertise, and then use video tutorials. Like what I'm doing with you right now is an example of an online course. It's pretty simple. The program that I'm using to record this screen is Camtasia Studio made by TechSmith. So I'm able to record tutorials for you. And if I wanted to, I could extract the audio from these tutorials to just have separate audio files so you could listen in the car, for instance. I could have these tutorials transcribed for those that like to read and follow bullet points. All of the above could be extra value adds plus the tutorials that you could have in an online course. You could even have cheat sheets and checklists, a wide variety of things that since you're talking about this all day long, it makes perfect sense to put it into a course. You can even have a light version. For example, you know, if you charge $5,000 for a coaching package, well, you could have a low barrier offer that is an online course. Maybe it's for $497. And that $497 gives you a great deal of things that you can do on your own. It doesn't give you the personal one-on-one -on -one coaching or the group coaching but you get all these things in particular to help get them closer to the result they're seeking. So make sure any way, shape, or form you can to repackage your expertise into other products and programs so you can have more products. I really hope this was helpful for you, and I made many of these mistakes early on in my career. <laughs> learn, please learn from my errors and I promise you, you will be off to the races and the consulting will be a very fun relationship for you with clients, stress-free and you'll be making a lot of money helping people and just adding a new dimension to your overall business. See you in the next tutorial.